Hello and welcome to today's video. This video is probably actually going to take place over the next couple of weeks and this is going to be a very spoiler filled, hopefully opinionated if the books are good, if not I'm not going to care, vlog of me reading the four shiver books. Uh, this is the first one I've got here and basically vlogging the process. I know this is quite an old series now but I have never read any of them and I recently managed to get all four of them so this is something I'm going to do. So starting with the first one obviously uh, I'm going to read the little bit on the back and give it a go. A chilling love story that will have you hooked from the very first page. When a local boy is killed by wolves, Grace's small town becomes a place of fear. But Grace is fascinated by the pack and finds herself inexplicably drawn to a yellow-eyed wolf. There's something about him, something almost human. Then she meets a yellow-eyed boy whose familiarity takes her breath away. So yeah, uh, so basically it's going to be werewolves is what I'm thinking. And yeah, it does say it will hook you from the first page. So maybe I should just read the first page and see if that is true. So I read chapter one. It seems like it could be alright. I wouldn't necessarily say hooked from the first page but I'm intrigued so I guess and it looks like chapter one was only like two pages long and it looks like it's going to be the sort of book where the chapters are very short. What have we got at the back? Yeah this has got like over 60 chapters in it. So I'm excited and there's also an audiobook available so what I'm going to do to start reading it is um, find the audiobook and read whilst I'm cleaning for a bit so we'll see how that goes and if anything interesting happens I will check back in. Okay, so it's dual perspective. Um, so we know that the girl is called Grace and the boy is called Sam. No names have been given yet. Uh, not names. No ages have been given yet. And it's very weird vibe so far. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I think yet, but it's very weird. So I'm going to keep listening. I mean, I'm, I hope I like it. I've brought the entire set. <laughs> but we basically find out that he almost let his pack kill her, but then decided not to let them kill her because he thought she was pretty. And they've just got onto chapter three and he's potentially stalking her. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's kind of giving me icky vibes, so I'm really hoping that something gets sorted out quick. For six years. What? What? Okay. <laughs> I've gone into this knowing absolutely nothing except for the back of the book that I read out. I mean it's making me feel a bit better that it's six years later because it definitely felt like there was a bit of a power situation going on. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's keep reading. I'm assuming they're going to actually like talk to each other at some point. I'm really bad at spoiling myself, I literally just went to flick through. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to press play. I've got to chapter six now and it's all right like I'm I'm enjoying it um they've met but he was a wolf and she was human 
and he's seen her whilst being human but they didn't meet at that point like they haven't both met as humans yet um which i assume is going to happen from the back of the book and yeah it's going good i would say i'm listening to the audiobook um just using scribd and the only problem i'm personally having which is probably a uk problem to have is in the book it, the title of the chapter so it's chapter six the name and then it tells you the temperature so it's like five degrees celsius but the audio version says that in fahrenheit um which i don't know uh i'm kind of getting the hang of like what it is like i know roughly but um that is one thing just to know about the audio version of it um yeah i'm interested in it i'm going to try and read half of it today so i've put a little post-it note in at halfway and we'll just see how it goes but I am after starting to read it after the first couple of chapters I am pleasantly surprised that it seems to be improving so yeah okay going good I've got to chapter 14 and it's actually really good it's a little young for me I'm not gonna lie like I should have read this series many years ago I'm still really enjoying it it's really sweet I think it's very interesting that we know the temperature um yeah that's weird and then they've also so I'm about to start chapter 14 chapter end of chapter 12 and chapter 13 they've met as humans but no well, the fact that there's four books in this series, I'm assuming that Sam is going to live, but we've just found out he's been shot and she needs to get him to the hospital. And yeah, like, it's really good so far, and the dynamic is really interesting. Like, we haven't really seen them interact, but the dynamic between, like, Grace and other people, I feel like you're already kind of able to tell her personality a bit and see that, like she is very much questioning a lot of things i mean they're all wolf related things so i'm sure we're going to figure it out but yeah it just seems very good and very normal in the weirdest way possible because there's fucking werewolves but yeah but so far it's going pretty good and i'm very excited by it so yeah um i'll check back in next time something interesting happens Okay, so we are on day two of reading the Shiver series. I haven't read anything today, but I did do quite a bit of reading before going to bed last night. And obviously I was in bed, it was pitch black, I got my audiobook on. So I did take a few notes of like things that I thought were noteworthy. We found out that the wolves are human in spring, but it's currently September and he is Sam that is has come back into human form his parents lit his wrists and like tried to kill him as a kid like he was turning into a wolf but they were like thinking he was possessed and tried to kill him so there's that we haven't really explored that backstory yet I don't know if it's gonna come up or not but it was mentioned so yes yeah, so we also learned that Grace was bit but she doesn't become a wolf uh, we don't know why she's not a wolf but Sam has also tested her and like sent her images through the like wolf communication way and she saw them like she recognized the place he'd sent her images of so we really don't know what's going on there so that's very interesting I thought it was going to be like human werewolf love story but it turns out they could both be werewolves Sam believes that it's going to be his last year of turning human but he hasn't yet told Grace and I mean he's thinking that but I'm also like there's still half a book to go and there's three other books in this series so chances are even if that is the case there's gonna be some work around or something but I don't know if I'm really being really like pessimistic just like well no no okay so just quickly gonna do a check-in I read some more of this last night I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to read at all today uh, if I do I'll update Sam met the parents eventually and not long after meeting the parents and vibing with the mom she was an artist as well uh, Shelby attacked Grace and tried to kill her and my basic thought at the moment is there is only 
this much of the book left and I'd say the main storyline is this is potentially his last year as a human well he believes it is and he's fighting the urge to turn back into a wolf the colder it's getting so the big thing at the moment is is he gonna do it is he gonna turn is he gonna turn back into a wolf before the end of the book I have a few theories I basically think they're just gonna figure out a way for him not to turn that he's just going to be a person or like be able to choose or something like that um i really don't see it going any other way there's quite a few subplots going on like with side characters so that's quite cool um there's something going on with olivia one of the best friends we don't know exactly what she's over a wolf or has been bitten or something's happening or she's just having a psychotic break because she's met a wolf something like that I'm getting the vibe of so I will check back in as and when I keep reading I'm really enjoying it so far it's definitely not a five star book um it'll probably be like a four or a three star but I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited to keep going so yeah hello time for another check-in it is currently day five and I've only actually got a really tiny little sliver of this left I don't know if you can see that if I put my finger in I've only got this left so that's really exciting i didn't take notes last night normally if something interesting happens i take notes so i can like remember it so i've literally got five chapters left to go and they are really small chapters in this book so that's probably only about 30 pages olivia one of the best friends has been bit jack who was actually turned into a werewolf not dead he is still transition as a, as a new werewolf and his sister knows everything. Sam has just turned back into a werewolf and he probably won't turn human again but after an unlikely friendship is formed with Isabel, Grace and Isabel kind of came up with a theory that they might be able to cure the werewolves. Therefore it is to uh, inject the people with meningitis and not give them any solution for the actual infection until they've got hot enough that they should have killed the werewolf in them so yeah they've just injected people with that and now we're going to continue reading just finished the book i enjoyed it i thought it was good it was fun i think it's gonna be a three and a half stars there's nothing wrong with it it just didn't grip me it didn't give me the extra details the extra stuff but it, it was written interestingly the dual perspective was really cool um how the chapters depicted them was cool you could tell whether people were wolves or humans by the way the chapters read I liked the extra detail of having the temperature. There was a lot of convenience in it. There was a lot of stuff that, especially at the end, we just found out he's alive and human. And Olivia stayed being a wolf and went off and was a wolf for the winter. Jack died and magically, Sam, the one person she really wanted to be human, is now human. It's just a bit too convenient for me. It's just a bit like... Yeah, so I did just wrap it up like that. So, yeah, I did really enjoy it and I'm probably going to start the next book later today. So I'm going to give it 3.5 stars, which means on Goodreads it will show up as 4 stars so you can't get half stars and I've rained up. But yeah, I will uh, check back in before I start the next one. Okay, so I'm about to start this one, book 2 of the Shiver series. This one is called Linger and this is a continuation of the first book on the back it says Grace and Sam have a love like no other they have battled the odds to be together but their fight isn't over Grace must defy her parents and keep dangerous secrets Sam must face his werewolf past and find a way to survive but just as they find happiness Grace realises she's changing in a way she never expected now just reading the back I'm like Grace is going to turn into a werewolf just putting it out there just reading the back of it changes in ways she never expected like yeah we'll see if that's true it might not be but yeah i'm excited to read this one i have had a quick flick through and it looks like it's still multiple perspective so yeah i'm excited to read it 
I am going to be using the audiobook on Scribd again for this one because it's available and I found the first one really enjoyable reading it that way and it's the same narrators well the two narrators that did Grace and Sam are the same narrators and then there's a few more in this one as well so yeah I'm going to get reading it and I will probably check in in the morning with my thoughts on the initial introduction and what's going on Okay, so it's the end of the day today and I just thought I'd do a little update on this one. I'm up to chapter 14, which is about a quarter of the way through the book. And it's going alright. Um, it's very slow. I expected, because it was the second book in a series, that the pace would be a bit quicker than the first one. But it's really slow and I'm a quarter of the way through the book and still not a lot has happened. Uh, I'm pretty sure that my theory of Grace is turning into a werewolf is true. There is this werewolf scent that Sam keeps smelling. And he smelt it on her kiss. And he smelt it on her clothes and... Well, I'm pretty sure... I don't know. I don't, unless there's some big plot twist and it wasn't that, but yeah. Pretty sure. The new werewolf, who is one of the perspectives we follow, has also now met, very briefly met Sam and has also now met Isabel. That is literally as far as we've got so far. Like, we've got an, like backstory on everyone and we kind of learn a bit about them but literally very little has happened yet. Grace is getting headaches, probably turning into a werewolf. Sam is working at the bookshop, it's his birthday, he remembered his parents acted on his birthday. Isabel has been angsty. Um, she found Cole naked in the house of Lloyd for him, getting upset over her brother but doesn't understand why. He's dead, so yeah. Cole was a musician and potentially addicted to some sort of drugs, but it's not clear yet. And we know he's got some sort of attitude and that he chose this life, which he knows is eventually just a wolf and he seems to like being a wolf. You've literally yeah, read the first 120 pages of me. Keeping my fingers crossed, but that's what's going on. Okay, hello, so. Linger. I think it's still the same day. I think I checked in this morning, but I can't really remember. But I thought I needed to do a bit of an update. I am um, over two thirds of the way through now. It's picking up, stuff's going on. Um, it's just not going very fast. Like, I'm really enjoying it. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. It's just not great. Um, what's her name? Grace is basically turning into a wolf, we're pretty sure, or dying. Um, and she's still hiding it from Sam. There's definitely something going on between Isabel and Cole and we're also led to believe that Cole's not as bad as he seems or as bad as other people are perceiving him. What's, what I'm finding really interesting about this book is it is split up into perspectives again so there's four different perspectives but it can change perspective during a chapter which it didn't in the first book so I do think that's cool and we're definitely getting to see everyone's like cider thing it just kind of seems like the things that are happening are very minor and I really do feel like this book could be summed up within a few words like I could tell you the entire plot and everything that's going on in a few pages um obviously not in the same amount of detail or learning the same amount of stuff but that's just how it's feeling right now I am I'm intrigued I'm intrigued to see what's happening but there's also nothing shocking happening so far I've guessed everything that's gonna happen so there's that as well um it just seems a bit obvious but I was just expecting a bit more like I was expecting to have strong opinions strong reactions to things like love it hate it I'm just kind of meh so okay hello good morning um so I finished the book last night well technically this morning and the thing is I've really enjoyed it I must have enjoyed it because suddenly the book ended like I was listening to it on audiobook and I looked at the time and it was after 4am so I enjoyed it it was just really really predictable uh I'm pretty sure I said on camera that I'm like well she's either dying and she's gonna die or she's turning into a werewolf well 
both happened. She was dying, but then she ended up turning into a werewolf. I feel that like both of the two that I've read so far could be a hundred pages shorter and still tell you the exact same thing. I don't need them to be a hundred pages shorter, I'm enjoying reading them, it's just... I don't know, it's an interesting one. I will be starting forever. This is actually the third and technically final book in the trilogy but after this came out like another companion novel came out that starts after this one but I'm pretty sure it doesn't follow Grace and Sam I think I read that it's like following two of the side characters I think it might be following Isabel and Cole um so it's like their perspective more which I think will be really interesting so although they were given a perspective in Linga the second book it wasn't a lot of the story it was just the odd bit here and there so yeah but I'm gonna read this one next and the audiobook for this one isn't actually available on Scribd for the UK it says it's not available in this country like the other two I'll quickly read the back of it Sam has always loved Grace as a wolf he watched her from afar as a boy he held her in his arms no face in life about her Sam will do anything to keep Grace safe even if it means risking everything he has anything as long as their love can survive I don't know if I have high hopes for it to be honest but we will see. Hello. So I didn't end up reading it all yesterday but the night beforehand I read quite a bit and I made a few notes so I just thought I'd like go over them now before I pick up the book again and forget what I was thinking previously. The one thing that I'm really enjoying in this book is the storyline that we get in between Cole and Sam and how like their relationships changing as they're like figuring out each other's personalities and learning that neither of them are actual dickheads basically like they actually can get along so I'm enjoying that unfortunately I still feel like in this book every single obstacle that there is is very conveniently solved um there's a point that I've like just passed where Grace was well first of all Grace has been chased by Shelby and obviously Shelby wanted to kill her so Grace was a human at this point and was running and then she very conveniently just like oh fell into a sinkhole full of water now Shelby can't get her so it's like okay whatever but then like it was cold so she turned into a wolf and then very conveniently Sam and Cole managed to find her and then even more conveniently Cole just has to run to the shed and hope that he can find something and oh physics brain can figure out that you can use these boxes and make it flow and get them out and yeah it was um it was just too convenient honestly it's um getting a bit repetitive hey like when is the problem I'm not even like oh shit hey they're gonna solve this I'm like oh they're just gonna solve this in some convenient way and the other thing is um the chapters some of them are from Grace's viewpoint still but some of those are her viewpoint as she's a wolf and I feel like that's a really interesting part of the book um we haven't really seen like the world building and like the fantasy side of it from like an actual wolf perspective in the previous book so I feel like we got a couple of snippets in Linga we did get a couple of little bits but not really overall so yeah, I'm really enjoying that perspective and seeing it from that side, like what they actually experience as a wolf. I am also actually physically reading this one, which is why it is taking me a bit longer because to physically pick up a book, I think it's more difficult because if you're tired, well, at least for me, if I'm tired, I don't really want to read physically. But if I'm tired, I can very easily put an audio book on and like still get lost in it and like follow along with the book through audio so yeah there is that so it's probably many days later now and I'm still reading forever and to be honest I've realised I just don't care um I haven't picked it up in a couple of days just because life and yeah I've just read a chapter and I'm like I really don't care about this um she's a wolf he's no human Cole's figured out they've only got roughly 10 years of turning between wolf and human before you get stuck as a wolf and then you only have like 15 years after that before you die because something about 
the changing stops you from dying. So there's that storyline. Um, Isabel's dad has now got a party together to soon go and kill all of the wolves. It'll be like a tactical shootout thing from helicopters. So there's that, but uh, I don't know. Like she's a human right now. She will be back to a wolf at some point soon. I don't really know what to say. I'm not vibing with it, so I'm struggling to have opinions and care. But if anything interesting happens, or if I start caring or something, I will check in. It's really late now, so I'm just going to read a bit more before bed. Um, we're actually planning a day out tomorrow where hopefully we'll get quite a bit of reading done. So I guess I will check in at some point. <laughs> Olivia's dead. I don't even care. That's how little of an impact they made of the side characters. I don't know. I'm not enjoying this bit anymore, but I'm still excited to go on to the next book, which is like a continuation of the story, but following Isabel and Cole. So I want to read it. I want to finish it because I'm sure something interesting will happen at some point. But I don't know. Are we surprised that Sam has magically met a police officer who magically saw Beck's eyes in a wolf when he was trying to shoot him to had put the dots together and magically owned some land that they could all move to which will completely eliminate their problem? Are we surprised? Are we surprised? <sighs> I've almost finished this. I've got about 40 pages left and we're eventually, eventually getting some real action and shit going on um the aerial hunt has been moved up and grace is currently in the woods as a wolf and it looks like it's all just centering around that and i mean we already know they're gonna get grace out <laughs> probably get a few of the other wolves out and they're gonna move to some cabin probably somewhere by the peninsula that is at least my theory and i mean i haven't got anything wrong yet um so yeah so i finished this one meh it was all right like it wasn't dnf worthy but there were points it was getting close towards the end there was a whole 10 or so pages where cole was dead i knew i can't see my book but i knew that in the next book the like little mini one they did it's Cole and Isabel's story, so I already knew he wasn't dead, but even if I hadn't have known that, it was only 10 pages, it really wasn't a big thing, but I feel like it could have potentially added to my experience. So yeah, wasn't a big fan of this one, to be honest. I might two-star it. That's what I'm kind of leaning towards, but I don't know. I will quickly read the back now so I don't forget. A stunning companion novel to the best-selling Shiver trilogy, Cole and Isabel shared a past that never seemed to have a future. Now Cole is back, back in the spotlight, back in the danger zone, back in Isabel's life. Can this sinner be saved? Ooh. Yeah. I'm excited to read it. I found both Cole and Isabel much more interesting characters than both Sam and Grace, so I'm hoping this book will be good, and it's quite short, so yeah. Hopefully it's good. I'll check back in at some point. Okay, so the camera battery is about to die, but I thought I'd do a quick check-in before the end of the day. I've got to chapter 25, which is pretty crazy. It is almost midnight, so that's like a full day's reading. But I'm actually enjoying this one. It actually seems good. I still don't know where the story's heading. Um, obviously, I expect towards the end, Colin and Isabel will be together properly, but except for that, I really don't know where the story is heading, and it's really, really nice. This is way more interesting than the other books, to be quite honest. Um, 
and I don't know if it's like Cole and Isabel, I don't know if it's like a different setting, the LA setting, I really don't know, but I'm enjoying it. And it also kind of feels a little bit of like a Keeping Up With The Kardashians episode mixed in with a YA fantasy novel, so that is very interesting. It doesn't have to be Kardashians, could be any reality TV. I'm really enjoying it. And um, before, I can't remember exactly when it was introduced, but it's like before chapter 19, social media was introduced. It feels very real world, like they're not pretending things don't happen, they're not like, it's not convenient, it's not as convenient as things aren't just happening to happen. And I don't know, I'm enjoying it basically. Um, I'm going to keep reading it a little bit more before bed, but I will check back in when more progress has been made. Hello, so I finished the book and I have a lot of thoughts and yeah um also apologies if the lighting is weird now we're in the middle of a heat wave I'm already sweating to death and I've only just got ready for the day and we're trying to keep the curtains closed to try and keep as much cool in and heat out it might look weirder than usual but I don't care it's too warm <laughs> so yeah <laughs> these are the books so I started off with Shiver this is the first book in the series um so this is technically a trilogy I believe and these three books are the trilogy and then this is more of like a companion novel some people class it as the fourth book some people class it as 3.5 some people class it completely separately but here they are together I guess I will quickly go over my star ratings to kind of give you a quick overview of what I thought so we've got 3.5, 3.5, 2 and 4 so yeah there's that and to be honest these two weren't the same there just wasn't enough difference to lower it so yeah Shiver the first book was really interesting I did enjoy it and I enjoyed the premise of it and obviously you saw my thoughts throughout it read quite young to start off with that did get sorted out quite quick but it did put me off a little and then even in this one I'd started to notice that things were being sold very conveniently. However in this one I like their characters, I liked Grace, I like Sam, they're our main two characters and the story, the concept, it was interesting and we're kind of seeing how it was working and I also enjoyed the introduction of like all the side characters as well. As you'll learn later on Isabel ended up being one of my favourite characters of the series and I thought it was interesting that they didn't do the trope of one teenager gets turned into a mythical creature so suddenly all their friend knows and it's just a group secret I thought it was good that it didn't completely go to that straight away and yeah I did enjoy it I gave it 3.5 stars and to be honest that's what I think it deserved and I was happy with it I was excited to continue on this one got a lot more predictable well, when I say a lot more, they're, they're all very predictable. I've been able to tell you for all of them what's going to happen, roughly. Like, there might be the odd detail that they added in. But it was very predictable. And I started going off our main two characters. They were boring, to be quite honest. Everything was sold so easily. And I just, I'm not a fan of that. I wanted a bit more intrigue. I wanted a bit more, will they, won't they? Like... Are oh, they going to fix this problem? Whereas a problem arises, I'm like, well, they're going to fix it. Like, you can already see the solution. There weren't real big things. But yeah, um, that was this one. That's Forever Book 2. And wait, this wasn't Book 2. I'm talking about Linger as Book 2. <laughs> yeah, just pretend all of what I said was for this book, Linger, because I was talking about Book 2, just holding the wrong book up. So, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, um... And it was alright, I I still enjoyed it, that also means I probably held them in the wrong order the whole time. So book 1 got 3.5, book 2 got 3.5, book 3 got 2, and book 4 got 4. Very, oh, it's, it's really warm to be quite honest, it's like more than 30 degrees right now. Book 2, I still enjoyed it, it was still nice, and our side characters definitely came out more as well, and we started seeing more of their personalities, and I feel like they're these books did individual character personalities really really well that is one thing I will say for them even if it didn't tell you who was talking you could probably tell by their personality and the traits it was saying so that was really good but yeah that was the second book so yeah so then we're on to book three and 
it was just even worse. Um, everything was so convenient. Everything that got solved was obvious. Um, and obviously, I didn't read the Sir Coming Out. I already have this book. So the only thing they did that was probably a little bit surprising, there was about 10 pages in there where I thought Cole might be dead. However, this book is based on Cole and Isabel after this book ends. So it wasn't this big thing because it's like, well, there's another book based on them. He's not dead. I, I really couldn't be asked with it, to be honest. Sam and Grace got even more boring. Like... The thing is, they weren't bad characters, they weren't bad people. I was just fed up, I was like, this is a lot. Yeah, the, I was hoping the third book would be a good summary, a good ending, like, you know, sort out all the problems that I'd identified actually do something crazy. Like, it was already an established series by this point, maybe they'd actually push the boat out, which didn't. I was, I was really disappointed with this third book and I just gave it two stars. Then, Either the fourth book or the companion novel, however you want to refer to it, is Sinner. This one followed Cole and Isabel, and I don't think I did a lot of updates on this because I read it so, so, so fast. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was really different to the other books. It was based in LA rather than Minnesota, and all of the characters were different. There were a couple of times where Sam and Grace were referenced as in like Cole would be calling them or Isabella call them or whatever, but it wasn't really anything like the others. Cole and Isabel were there, but every other character, every other thing was different. And it was really, really good. Um, I think I'll probably have said that it kind of gave me the vibes of these books like this sort of werewolf fantasy style book mixed with like some sort of behind the scenes reality tv show which is basically what it is but i really enjoyed it it was really different i haven't read anything like this one before so yeah that was really good for me um and the characters were a lot more interesting Colin and isabel are actually interesting they have past they have what looks like could be an interesting future together and they seem real. Yeah, I was happy with it and I gave it four stars, which is the highest rated out of all of them. Here we are. Here are the books. And I am happy with them, I guess. I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I read them. And I am interested in picking up some different Maggie Stiefwater books. Uh, I do have The Raven Boys, so maybe I'll pick that one up next. But she's wrote a lot of stuff, so I'm excited to pick something up. And... Here they are. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it interesting. If you'd like me to do any other series for these sort of videos, let me go and look down below. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.